hash puppy, for his part, appeared to be moving beyond mere flashing purchasing power and entering the stratospheric consumption of the super rich. And brands were taking note. Stores lavished packs on hash puppy and his friends, elaborate birthday cakes, custom shoes, engraved Rolls Royce nameplates, name them all. The good life wasn't going to maintain itself though. The US government alleges that in January 2019, Bass received a message from Alumari, the Canadian online money mover. Alumari, who went by different names including G, Backwood, and Big Boss online, was a mustachioed 35-year-old who grew up in Ontario. He had been helping to cash out BC scams for years, including swindling a Canadian university out of $10 million in 2017. In Alumari's phone, a bus was listed as Hush, and the pair communicated on Snapchat, where he operated as HashPuppy5. Alumari told the bus he needed a pair of bank accounts in Europe, each able to receive 5 million euro, or that's about $6.1 million, without attracting attention. The money will arrive on February 12th, Abbas replied with details of a Romanian bank account he said could handle large amounts. The payouts, it turned out, will be coming from the bank of Valletta PLC in Malta, a commercial and investment bank with offices around Europe. It had been compromised months before in an unconventional and ambitious BEC style scam. According to reports by the Times of Malta, the hackers had first broken into the French stock exchange regulator, authorities the marches financiers. Then, posing as French regulators, they had sent phishing emails to the bank of Valletta. When an employee took the bait and clicked, the attackers were granted access to the bank's secure payment systems, where they prepared to send out a series of undetected payouts. In a separate indictment, the US government claims the hackers were agents of the North Korean government which the U.S. says has been on a $1.3 billion cybercrime spree since 2014, including more than $1 billion in digital bank heists and the creation of the notorious ransomware WannaCry, which was used to hack Sony Pictures Entertainment. It's unclear whether Alumari even knew the nature of his collaborators, but no matter, his role was to move the proceeds around the world as quickly as possible. My associates want you to clear as soon as it hits, he wrote to Abbas, saying the money could be recalled if the victim noticed the theft. If they don't notice, we keep pumping, he continued. On Hashpapi's Instagram, meanwhile, it was business as usual. January 24th found him lounging on a plush orange coach at Dubai's Louis Vuitton. Mature enough to wish the best for people I no longer talk to and really enough to mean it he wrote. On 1st February, he heard from Alumari again. 12th February they are doing it, he messaged, now saying he needed four bank accounts that could each accommodate millions of euros. Six days later, Alumari was up to six accounts. I have six slots in total, he wrote a bus. All five million euro. Big hit in 12th February. They will all credit same time. On February 9th, a bus posted from his suite in Dubai. The goal is to be valuable. Once you're valuable, instead of chasing money, you will attract it. Hashtag Fendi, hashtag Hermes, hashtag Hublot, hashtag Versace, hashtag Dubai. The next day, Alomari gave him one more chance to deliver another bank account. Brother, tonight is my deadline to submit anything more, he messaged. Do you want to add one more or just stick to the one you gave me? Abbas sent back details for a second account, this one in Bulgaria. On February 12th, Alumari wrote to Abbas to say that only one of the wires had gone through. 500,000 euros to the Romanian bank account, master's a payment for Tipico, an online sports betting company based in Malta. Brother, we still have access and they didn't realize, 
he said triumphantly. We're gonna shoot again tomorrow. But by the next morning, the alleged scheme had unraveled. Today they noticed some press recall on it. It might show and block or never show, Alumari lamented. Look, it hit the news, he said, sending a screenshot. The bank of Valletta had discovered that the hackers had moved $13 million out of the door. They quickly shut down their entire electronic system and began desperately trying to claw back the money. The bank would later say it had recovered most of the money. Damn, Abbas replied. Next one is in a few weeks. We'll let you know when it's ready, Alumari wrote. Too bad they caught on it or it will have been a nice payout. Easy come, easy go, and Abbas wasn't about to let it kill his social vibe. The next day, February 14th, he posted a photo of himself in a patterned Fendi jumpsuit, leaning against a spotless black car, palm trees in the background. Bought myself a new Bentley Bentiaga for Valentine's, he wrote. The car retails for $160,000. The best way to celebrate the season of love. It truly was the best way. If the criminal complaint against him is any guide, Abbas wasn't as cautious as his communications as large-scale money laundering might warrant. He communicated with Alumari using his main Dubai cell number, linking it to an email rayhashpapi at gmail.com attached to his Instagram and Snapchat accounts. He maintained at least two other phones, but they were easily traceable back to him. In his alleged plotting with Alumari, he seemed to lack even the basics of operational security. Still, according to the authorities, the jobs kept coming. In April 2019, Alumari returned with the prospect of a massive haul, $300 million in total, this time from the UK. Alumari's associates, in other words, had penetrated an organization and will be swapping in bank account details for weekly installments of a hundred million pounds, that's about $142 million contract. The money, he told Abbas, will be coming from an English Premier League team. There was precedent in the global soccer world for exactly this kind of BEC scheme applied to the payment of lucrative player transfers. In 2018, four years after the Italian club Lazio bought defender Stefan Di Vraj from the Dutch club Feyenoord, BEC fraudsters sent the Italians an official looking email with Feyenoord's logo directing the 2 million euro final installment of his transfer fee to their own Dutch bank account. The authorities have yet to allege whether Alumari's haste was meant to target a similar transaction such as they reported a hundred million pound fee paid to Chelsea for Eden Hazard's transfer to Real Madrid in 2019. Or perhaps one of the payments Tottenham Hotspur made that year for its near 850 million pound stadium. But after Abbas allegedly provided Alumari an account in Mexico to start receiving payments from the English club and a 200 million pound job in Scotland, the Canadian discovered that the UK banks were refusing to pay into it. It was too bad. Alumari said. His UK bank accounts were cleaning up. By Hashpapi's birthday that fall, according to the indictment, the pair had found smaller scale successes with the law firm heist. Then, just as the money came in, Alumari disappeared into the hands of the FBI. The next day, a bus old friend, Momfa, was arrested at a Nigerian airport by agents from the EFCC and charged with fraud and money laundering. Monfa didn't respond to Instagram messages seeking comment and his attorney didn't respond to a request for comment. In public, Abbas seemed uncharacteristically disinclined to gloat over his rival's downfall. On October 25th, he captioned a photo taken in the Dubai Rolls Royce dealership with a warning. In life, we all at a point we will go through trial times. Don't be quick to mock anyone or use anyone's trial time as a tool to chase clout. Yours will come and you might not survive it. We all look up to God to guide and get us through these times. 
I wish and pray for everyone in part of the world going through a dark time to come out of it and become better people and God be with their families. Hashtag God heals all wounds. Wish everyone good at all times. No one is holy. Hamis, Balenciaga, Hablot, Rolls Royce, Dubai. A few days later, the gossip blogs noted that he had changed his Instagram bio from billionaire Gucci master to real estate developer. Buzz friend Park says that while he enjoyed the fruits of Hush Puppy's lifestyle in Dubai, tagging along to clubs and hopping planes, behind the scenes he had little luck finding work. All the jobs they are offering me, the money was so low, Park said. Maybe the same that I could make in Nigeria. By early 2020, he was ready to return home and start his own business, but his departure was delayed by a bout of appendicitis. Abbas paid the medical bills for his emergency appendectomy. By the time he had recovered, in March, COVID protocols had arrived and Nigeria was suspending flights from the UAE. Never want to tone down his influencing, Hashpapi continued to push his brand of consumptive positivity through the pandemic. In April 2020, he posted a video of himself taking a bubble bath in his Lanai hot tub with the caption, my quarantine and your quarantine are not mates. He followed that up by reposting an old photo of himself carrying Gucci bags onto a private jet. Fellow inmates, where's the first place you fly after this is over and with who? He asked. Perhaps sensing there was something pervasive in this approach, he tried going political. While you are sanitizing and wiping everything down, be sure to wipe racism, hatred and jealousy out of your heart. He wrote beneath a May photo of himself leaning on a white rose, smiling and gazing out of frame. That too is a virus. By then, however, Abbas and his compatriot Ponle, aka Mr. Woodbury, were fully in the grip of a different invisible enemy. The FBI's high-tech organized crime squad had been analyzing Alumari's devices since his arrest and covering the easily decipherable links to Hashpapi's phones and accounts. They had also pegged Ponle as the orchestrator behind millions of dollars in bank accounts and Bitcoin wallets used in BEC scams. For months, the FBI had been coordinating with the UAE authorities to surveil both men and their suspected associates.